to know from the Northern Marianas at the palm of your hand. Full stories, daily updates, and snapshots of the beauty across the Marianas. Follow KUAM CNMI now. It's a tradition that began almost 70 years ago. A trusted legacy, a voice, an advocate, a resource for news you need to know. Through the years, the headlines have changed, as many of those who have graced the screens, sat behind and in front of the cameras, and come into your homes every night. But our commitment to keeping you informed, engaged, and to represent the diverse voices in our community has never wavered. We are your news leader on every platform and every device. We've grown with the community to reflect the changing times. We are KUAM News, the voice of the Marianas. Half a day, I'm Gunnery Sergeant Ruben Tan from Marine Corps Base Camp Blas, personally asking you to join me in supporting the Marine Corps Toys for Tots program by collecting new and unwrapped toys for children this year. The Toys for Tots program, now in its eighth year in the CNMI, has partnered with the Saipan Chamber of Commerce, Lady Diane Tours Foundation, and the associated students of NMC to make this holiday season a time to remember for kids and teens throughout the Commonwealth. You may drop off your new and unwrapped toys today through December 10th at any of the 30 businesses who are cur currently participating in our campaign throughout Saipan, the Lady Diane Tours Foundation, Commonwealth Bureau of Military Affairs, and CNMI Women's Affairs offices. We kindly ask that when purchasing this year, to please remember gifts for older children and young teenagers. On behalf of the United States Marine Corps and the KUAM Care Force, we thank you for coming together and sharing the spirit of the season. I'm Tomas Maglonia, and so just before we hear from the independent team, we will be sharing these two interviews that we did with them shortly after uh, the win was clear early Saturday morning, and also the concession speech that Senator Vanessa Blon uh, delivered early that morning as well. So while we wait for the press conference to begin, we will be sharing those interviews. <laughs> Uh, 
Lieutenant Governor and uh, Mayor, can we just get your initial reactions to the results so far that are in your favor? We we're very, very, very grateful, you know. We we're grateful to God about, you know, that's nothing happens without Him. And we thank Him for guiding us and protecting us and blessing us with this. But we were not really expecting the, the gap that large of a gap but uh, initially we were we were in the hole I mean, we were down 490 votes I believe and so we started chipping away uh, you know Dave and I uh, worked very quietly and worked hard very quietly our, our team worked hard also um, in the last three month before the election uh, our team started going to the bigger precincts precinct one three and five and and uh, but we had a really good uh, committees in, in two and precinct two and four and uh, also in Rhoda TBN also when, when the Democrats came on board uh, that really uh, helped of course, with Tina and Leila and the Democrats uh, uh, throwing their support behind our team, uh, certainly uh, helped a lot, and that made a lot of difference. So, yeah, that's that's why we uh, we saw the, the result, and we were very we were very very happy with it. People have spoken, and we're humbled by it. Um, you know, I guess we have to wait for the, the absentee ballots before, you know, CEC certifies. But I think, you know, if you do the math, uh, I don't think, uh, I, I, I think we, we, we're pretty much there. And, and Dave and I have to start preparing and started uh, start doing planning for our, our transition and, and, and a new administration. And Amir, your reaction? Well, at first I want to say thank you to all our supporters, uh, Saipan, Rora, Tinian, and of course all our people in the states who have uh, taken the time to request the absentee ballot and uh, sending him over here. Uh, we appreciate that and we love them very much. Uh, this uh, campaign has been a very uh, challenging, very long. Uh, it's a lot of hard work and uh, we want to thank our committees, executive committee, on our supporters that have been uh, going around with us throughout this uh, about a year already. So, and have you, thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. And have you uh, spoken with uh, the Taurus uh, Sublime team at all no, tonight? No, no. Not yet. And uh, can it can it just get uh, your reflection? Uh, the last time uh, you were uh, at uh, an event waiting for the results, you were his running mate. Uh, you yes. were. Uh, you seem to be. Uh, in the lead now. So, so what's your reflection now that uh, you um, are in the lead uh, uh, against uh, your sitting governor that was your former running mate? Well, you know, uh, you know, in, the one thing I've come to accept and, and became a mantra in, in my political life is every election that we've gone through, same as uh, as uh, the mayor, uh, we've gone through a lot of elections. And there's only two things that can happen in elections. You either win or you lose. And to me, when you win, uh, an older statesman advised me a long time ago to be humble. When, you, when, you're, when you're victorious, be humble. When, you're, um, when, when you lose, you know, you be gracious. So, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm humble. I am humble by by this apparent victory, uh, and um, I believe the Commonwealth and the people need, and this community needs to heal, and Dave and I will help facilitate that healing. And, and uh, uh, it was a low uh, voter turnout, um, or at least the numbers we're seeing, some of them were, were lower than the yeah. original day. Uh, is your comment on that? Uh, I'm not really sure why that is, you know, uh, but I think that has been the case also in other other runoffs, you know, uh, maybe people were just fatigued, uh, I'm not sure.
and I, you know, I cannot put my my finger on it. But you know, uh, despite that, uh, you know, the law says 50 plus one of votes cast. So. And I know uh, you both uh, perhaps are fatigued as well. You've been up all night. Just uh, your last message, I'm sure. Um, we will be uh, following up with both teams in the coming days and perhaps weeks, given that absentee votes are counted until December 9. Uh, so just uh, your parting message before uh, you uh, head home tonight. Well, uh, we believe the people have spoken and, and we're humbled by the results. And we thank the people of the Commonwealth uh, for their support. And, and We know that we have a lot of challenges ahead of us, uh, but, but we're going to start, you know, maybe after a day's rest tomorrow or, or today, uh, Dave and I will roll up our sleeve and start putting the team together, the transition team together, and, uh, and start work. And who had your transition team? Uh, we haven't even talked about that, right. to tell you the truth. Right. And Mayor? Well, I just want to say again, thank you for uh, all the support. Uh, from our people and especially the executive committee that have uh, worked so hard to uh, help us out through this campaign and all that. So thank you to our partners to the Democratic Party for joining us uh, Unity to unite and move this uh, uh, Democrat and Independent forward for the people of the Commonwealth. So we're looking forward to working with them uh, throughout the administration and then uh, We'll be inviting them also to join us. Thank you very much. All right, thank to God you. be the glory. All right, thank you both, uh, right. Lieutenant Governor thank and Mayor. So appreciate your time. I know it's been a long thank night. You. Thank you so much. But now that we feel this, I told him, I said, God, we always have to respect the will of the people. Mm -hmm. And we always have to accept what God has for us. Yes. And that is what me and the governor we're right now, in our hearts, that is what we're doing right now. And we are content, right? We're content with that. And, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna go through, through this. Um, and we're all gonna go through this together, right? This is not the last time that we're gonna be together. We formed a bond, we formed a family with each other. Let's not forget that and let's not let each other go, no? Um, where, where we go from here. Love you, baby. Um, where we go from here, we don't know, right? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna call the governor up here so we can get closer to you. Um, because closer to you is where we wanna be. Where we go from here, we don't know, right? Miracle! next ni Right? Okay, and that's what we have to give hope, yes. hope for, right? But we wanna give thanks to everybody, um, to our wives, um, Imanyaina, Timona, thank you for all the blessings. And everybody around here, each and every one of you, and Tadeo, um, Roman, and Atiani, my mom, and Tibibang, and everybody. And even all the kids, the kids that have really stuck by us and really went through the political season with us. You know, it, it's, it's, it's such an honor to, um, to, to um, go through it together, Low.
Hey, you day. Everybody, the press ready? Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for joining us again. Uh, this is a, a day that <clears throat> I believe all of us have long waited for. Uh, Saturday morning, um, the governor called me and we, we had a, a uh, short conversation. And uh, he had uh, indicated that uh, basically he would be officially uh, sending an official notice to the, to the public that uh, congratulating us on our victory. Uh, Apollosius Apatang um, team. So it was basically, a, uh, I guess, a concession letter. And yes, probably all have the public notice, um, albeit my name wasn't on the letterhead, but it's all good. <laughs> I'm just joking. Governor, I'm just joking. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's been a long, uh, it's been a long journey, it's been a long road. Uh, there were times when it was very contentious and, and, and very, very, uh, uh, for lack of better word, I guess, became nasty at times. and. Uh, but uh, we're here today, uh, the election is over, and we're very happy that uh, Dave and I uh, won the election, in the runoff election also. And, uh, but the time uh, is right for our community to heal from the many, sometimes very ugly discord uh, in this campaign. And uh, be that as it may, uh, we can't turn the clock back, but we can certainly uh, move forward and heal this community. And like I said the other night, on the other morning, uh, when being interviewed by KUEM, um, I said that uh, uh, David and I, and, and I know that Tina and Leila will also help facilitate the healing in this community from the, the wounds of the campaign. And I. I'm also uh, very confident that uh, members of the legis the incoming incoming <clears throat> members of the legislature will also help in that regards because they too uh, uh, were on the campaign uh, trail for almost a year, and so <clears throat> I know that they will also help facilitate and help that healing in our community. And so we look forward to working with them, with everybody. The Senate and the House, and, and also the outgoing administration as we transition. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that um, in his press release, the governor uh, made a commitment to uh, give us as much uh, cooperation during the transition period that we're going to uh, uh, be undergoing in a very short time um, we will be hopefully uh, begin to put together our transition team in the next few days and maybe a week um, but I want to say that <clears throat> you know uh, 
if one looks at the number, um, the results of the general election, it was obvious that, that we had a lot of help from a lot of new voters for Palacio Zapatea and uh, uh, there is only one um, sector of the political uh, sections and parties uh, and that would be the, the Democratic Party and I want to thank uh, Tina and Leila and Selena and uh, <coughs> Julie Ogo and all, everybody that are are running under the Democrat or running independent, uh, non-affiliated, but came through to deliver those extra votes uh, to get us over the top, and, and uh, we're here today. So <clears throat> I want to humbly, humbly thank the people of the Commonwealth for their confidence in, in myself and, and in, in Mayor Apatang. And so I, I, I like to just take a few seconds to to give a round of applause to the Democrats and all those independents that came through. And uh, you know, and, and I also wanna wanna thank uh, my Republican colleagues who came out uh, strongly uh, every day during the, the early voting and even on election days who man their polls, man their, their districts to uh, give us that extra help to make sure that that our voters were intact uh, during the run of elections. So, uh, Congressman Sablon, Congressman Castro, Congressman Benaventi, and all the congressmen and senators, uh, Corina, and uh, that uh, put the extra efforts. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. It's a blessing, but it's uh, it's going to be a, a challenging road ahead. But I know deep down in my heart that, that we're going to be able to, to do good for the community. Um, I don't want to take any more of uh, the gov lieutenant governor elect uh, after thanks time, but. Uh, so, well, thank you, uh, soon to be governor, I'm waiting for January 9th, but uh, I just want to say thank you to our people of the Commonwealth for coming out strongly to support the team, the AD team, because we know uh, our partner also, the Democrat uh, Party, uh, I have a position in this campaign also. And uh, one of the things is the uh, good governance for this government, integrity in the government, and uh, we have a commitment. We sign a plate, and that plate stands. We will honor that. We will pursue it. We'll make sure that things are done right for our people in this commonwealth. <clears throat> you know, there's a lot of us that have been suffering and all that, and as we go around campaigning and but we promise to look into those issues and uh, uh, we will do it. Uh, we will work hard, I promise you. I know the governor's gonna work hard, but I make sure to. I'm older than him, so. <laughs> <laughs> he can tell me what to do, but I can always work. <laughs> and, uh, that's the, the thing you know, about working along, working together, and that's the good thing for our people. As long as we understand each other, uh, I'm a soldier. I know how to follow laws and policies and all that, uh, and I will continue to do that. As a mayor for this uh, island, Saipan, Saipan, for almost eight years, uh, we abide strictly on our laws. Make sure that uh, whatever we do, we follow the law, and that's what we're gonna do. Again, I want to thank our partners, the Democratic Party, for joining us after the general election to unite with us and put our hearts together for our people of this Commonwealth, because we all have believe in coming together to have a change in this administration. So thank you, my fellow Democrats, my partners, and I know the people 
for this Commonwealth are really looking forward for us working together. So she do small seat and looking forward to working with you guys. I first want to congratulate our Governor-elect Arnold Palacios and Lieutenant Governor-elect uh, Dave Apatang. They are statesmen and worthy leaders of our Commonwealth. I want to thank all the people who have exercised their rights to vote and use their vote to make their voices be heard. Um, special thanks goes to the Democratic voters who made the switch to AD in the runoff. It is because of your dedication uh, to the principles that we have fought for that we can also claim this victory. As they say, the people's mandate has been heard. It is clear that we should expect more of our leaders um, our government and its leaders, we know that resources are finite and that decisions made today will greatly affect the, uh, the future. And so now we must begin riding this course um, with our canoes, raising our proverbial uh, our sails, and preparing for this journey uh, to rebuild trust through accountability, transparency in government, and, and know that good governance is on the horizon. This is why the people voted for change. And now we will begin to sail towards this change. Uh, the, uni un uh, excuse me. the Unity Pledge uh, is the star map and the navigational tool for this new administration to consult with as they go. And we, the people, can follow that map too. It is part of our civic duties uh, to continue to hold our leaders accountable. And, and if they go off course, we must write the sails and get them back on course. And to that, I congratulate all the new leadership. And although the seas may sometimes be rough ahead, I'm ready to sail. It feels like a brand new day in the Marianas. And I joined Layla and my fellow Democrats in extending our sincerest congratulations to Governor-elect Arnold Palacios and Lieutenant Governor-elect David Apatang for their decisive victory, which truly is the victory of the people. I am proud of the strength and unity of our coalition and the focused determination we showed in the runoff election. Democrats, independents, and Republicans rallied to make sure that we would see the change in leadership that we so badly need in our commonwealth. And together, we won. Uh -huh. Every vote mattered in this election. And I am grateful to every citizen who showed up to vote and especially the people who voted for Layla and me on November 8th and delivered the critical margin of victory for Arnold and Dave in the runoff. Thank you. <laughs> Arnold and Dave are coming in with so much goodwill and hope coming from all corners of our islands. I've been hearing this sentiment every day, everywhere I go. People are yearning for change yearning for a fair and trustworthy government. And they are looking to Arnold and Dave and this coalition of leaders we've brought together to light the way. People will be paying very close attention to this transition because it will demonstrate the kind of leadership that we can expect from a Palacios Apatang administration. Typically and historically, the transition has been a time of fear and trepidation for some. A time of jockeying for jobs and contracts, calling in favors, waging vendettas. It is my hope and expectation that this transition will be different. Because Arnold and Dave have promised to be different. They've promised to rebuild trust. They've promised to heal. It is essential that this transition reflect the values and commitments to good governance outlined in the unity pledge that we signed a little over a week ago. These are the values of fairness, integrity, 
transparency, and fiscal responsibility. These are the commitments to open up the books and be honest with the people about the true fiscal condition of our government and where we go from here. The commitment to end the culture of political intimidation, cronyism, and nepotism in our government, to ensure fairness in government hiring and contracting, to restore the merit-based system of public employment, and accept applications for political appointments as well to exercise due diligence and care in considering all appointments to positions of authority, including but not limited to our law enforcement agencies. We need ethical, qualified people in leadership across our government. As Arnold and Dave and Leila and I often said during this campaign, good governance starts at the top. It's the leadership that sets the tone. It's the leadership that upholds the law. It's the leadership that models the conduct that is expected of public servants at every level of our government. But the leadership can't do it all alone at the top. Arnold and Dave will need help. They will need honest, capable women and men willing to serve and willing to lead. They will need people to be vigilant and engaged and speak up if they see something wrong and if they have ideas for how things could be better. Yes, we should expect more of our government and leaders. And we should also expect more of ourselves as citizens to do our part in building a better community where everyone can thrive. We have so many problems facing our government and our commonwealth. But these problems are solvable. We can fix our problems and make the Marianas the amazing place it has always had the potential to be. The people have given the new Palacios Apatang administration a clear mandate and placed in them their trust that Arnold and Dave will be faithful to their promises. And we should all, as citizens, help them right the ship of our government and set our commonwealth on a new course to a safer, healthier, more equitable, and more beautiful future. Governor-elect Palacios, there's been an emphasis uh, even since day one uh, on Saturday uh, on healing. Um, but perhaps the goal to open up the financial books of the Commonwealth also means that we'll be opening up some old wounds or fresh wounds. So given what you've said, that you've been locked out of the financial system of the Commonwealth, even as a sitting lieutenant governor, how do you ensure that this smooth transition ensures that all those financial records are included in that? And what is the dynamic moving forward of you opening those books for, for the public to see finally? To me, it's very simple. I would, the transition team would uh, request for all records uh, of expenditure dating back three, four years. We will look at it. And <clears throat> that's part of healing, uh, Mr. Mangalonian. And you know, sometimes, uh, sometimes, uh, you, 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 you need to hear out everything in order to make sure that, that if there were any wrongdoings, we need to correct them. And uh, <clears throat> we're, we will follow the law on this. And, and we're not going to do it out of vendetta. It just has to be done because the public deserves that. And that is one of our <clears throat> our promise uh, from the very beginning uh, that we will open the book and be very transparent about it. Uh, and to me, that's part of healing. That's part of healing this community. That if there are any questionable or you know wrongdoings, then we have to correct that and, and heal the community. And those that are flagrant flagrantly responsible for any of those wrongdoings would have to be held accountable to it. And that's, that's, the, that's, that's part of uh, good governance. And, and we will heal from that. But what I was referring to in healing is, is the political, the sometimes nasty political discord that we have 
uh, experience throughout this campaign season is but uh, <clears throat> in order for us to right the ship, so to speak, we need to know what is wrong, what happened. And, uh, and the engineer is the one that's responsible for the engine going crazy or, or uh, the guy that steers the canoe is the one that's wrong and we have to right that. And if we have to take him out and, and replace him with somebody else, then that's what we have to do. Uh, it's, it's, that's not something that I relish doing, but if that's what we have to do uh, to write our government, our governance, that's, it's, to me, it's very simple. And just a quick follow-up, uh, what is your going to be your uh, selection process for your transition team and your cabinet? I know Tila and Leila, when you were candidates, you said you would have an application <coughs> process open. Uh, uh, Governor-elect and Lieutenant Governor-elect, what is your process for selecting those teams? And perhaps your comment uh, for those who say that this is more of a, of a reshuffling, that those who might have left the Tories administration and heading to your administration will be put back into those cabinet positions. Well, you know, yes, there are a lot of of talented people in our community across the spectrum of the political parties. And I believe that over a long period of time, we have uh, disregarded some of the real talents in our community that, um, because of, of the political process and to the extent that that we will, we, we're gonna, like, like we pledge, we're gonna have an open uh, sort of an application. You gotta submit your your credentials to us and, and we're gonna have to vet those uh, to make sure that we put the right people, the, the, the qualified individuals into the, the, the right positions. There are a lot of qualified peoples, but sometimes if you look around our government, sometimes they're in the wrong positions in the wrong line of work and, and so but uh, believe me we 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 want to vet we want to vet vet a lot uh, better than than this past administration have done. You know one of the one of the probably the um, the unfortunate situation is when there's a there's not a change in administration <laughs> The tendency is to keep people in your old positions, whether or not they're, they're performing or not. And that's something that uh, Dave uh, and I are fortunate to have is a, a new administration and we look at every, every positions there is and try to bring in qualified individuals locally and if we have to go off island. To get that done, uh, that's not going to restrict us. The, the constraint is not going to be just for individuals and positions in, in government from, from the Commonwealth. We would love to have all these positions filled by people in the Commonwealth, but if we have to go outside of the Commonwealth to get, uh, that's it's going to be another source of talents and qualified individuals that we need to bring in. Um, you said that the healing is a very important thing and it's been uh, echoed uh, through all your supporters recently. Um, it must have started at the top. Can you tell us how that phone call went that first night and who made that phone call first? How did that work? Which, which phone call? Uh, with the governor. Oh, yeah. After not speaking for so long, yeah. I'm wondering how yeah, that was. I was, uh, I was pleasantly surprised when I picked up my phone. It says G U V, golf. And I thought it was like, so I also have, I also have golf 50 out. So I thought it was Uncle Ben that was calling me. And so when I, when I, I, I looked, I didn't look at the number. Oh, hey, boss, you know, we call each other boss. We had a very uh, pleasant conversation, uh, you know, some pleasantries. And, and I said, man, you kick my butt in the run up. <laughs> and he said, you know, you you were even dragging Tina along on the 
on uh, election day and and she was dancing with Auntie Wella there in the pool. And I, when I saw that, I said, oh man, I'm, we're in trouble. <laughs> and then Leila was out, out there also doing the same thing, uh, uh, campaigning uh, even up to election day, uh, to the last hour of election day. So, you know, we gave it all we got. And gave every effort to succeed and, and it, it showed. Uh, you know, uh, to those of you that looked at some of the results in the early election, it was almost uh, depressing, but uh, if you look at the real numbers, the specific numbers on, on a day-to-day -day basis of those early votes, it, was, it wasn't that far. Uh, we gained, um, I believe, over 2,000 more than 2,500 votes, additional votes, uh, obviously from a significant, a majority of that vote came from the, the, the Democrats, Leila, Athena, Leila's team, and, and but there were also uh, some people that came back on board, and uh, uh, that was the, the big difference. But, uh, he asked if uh, the governor said, you know, when you're ready, let's have coffee. I said, okay. Yeah. And we were, you know, we were very, very pleasant about it. And I said, I'll, I'll give you a call. And how, and how long does it take between now and when you will start that transition? Is it about a week or so? Is it within a couple of weeks? Yeah, we're going to take a look at the transition statute because, you know, we want to we want to make sure we, we don't overstep uh, our boundaries on that. We want to make sure that that uh, when we when we become official uh, and we start on the team, that we're not stepping on anybody's legal rights, or we're not stepping on the uh, we're not doing it with uh, outside of the the statute. So we we, we want to make sure, but but. Be that as in May, we're going to start looking at the transition team and start putting up, putting together that team, and that would be inclusive of independent and Democrats and other maybe apolitical individuals too. You know, but uh, we will we will, we're going to need a lot of talents uh, because time is very short, and we all want to have a very nice Christmas without all the, the, the headaches and the stress that uh, will come. So, you know, I, I would uh, <clears throat> probably ask some of our legislatures, sitting legislatures, senators, and, and members of the House to, to come on board to, to help. And even uh, folks from Rhoda and Timian will be inclusive, included in that. I don't know how much Tina wants to spend on a transition uh, in with a Colossus team that, and, and, and I don't know how Lela's, uh, I know they, uh, they're all also BC, but uh, we're going to be asking, right, Dave? <laughs> Dave is used to transition because he had to transition, and he's got to transition out the mirror's office. Uh, Governor elect you know with this with this transition forthcoming um, one of the primary concerns that we've been hearing around the community is you know whether or not they're going to keep their jobs and this is the ARPA jobs right uh, we know that when the ARPA funds came out there were offices open there were jobs that you know were given out um, just how, how can you address this now or uh, well, do you plan to address this in, in a not so my own thoughts, uh, you know, if those ARPA positions are temporary in nature, uh, people should know that. And the functionality of what they were hired to do is going to be critical because we need to put together the priorities. Uh, we know that ARPA funds are going to uh, disappear. And so to the extent that we can, we need to make sure that, uh, 
and the programs that are being funded are, are then are impactful, <coughs> meaningful to, and it's just not employment. So, to be honest with you, and I'm, I'm going to be very honest to the public, I cannot promise that your job, which was supposed to expire on December 30th, is going to be extended. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, what those jobs are. That's all I can say, you know. Um, I've looked at some of the programs and some of the, the projects that were initiated under ARPA, and, and some of them I question. Uh, you know, the, um, the relevance of some of these programs, uh, some of them were well put together and, and meaningful and impactful to the community. So if I if I'm just going to renew a person because there's still ARPA funds uh, and continue what I believe at some point in the, in, in, to even today uh, are wasteful uh, and I, I wouldn't be making that difference that I promise. So, you know, I cannot and I will not uh, hesitate to, I mean, if the governor and, and the, the initial employment contracts that they have is up to December 30th, then um, that's it. Well, I'm not I'm not going to go in there and terminate and, and disrupt people's life uh, because I, I didn't believe that, but just, just give them that the due process and the, and the time to to uh, potentially look for other employment. But if your program is being funded under ARPA and it has a meaningful, impactful, and it should continue, then we will continue. That's all I can say about that. Yeah. Just a follow-up follow uh, questions to Thomas' first question. Uh, has there been any information that any of your team has gathered so far in regards to opening the booth, especially in ARPA, expenditure, for example? Uh, indication of what? Have you got it some more information in regards no. to so far at this time? No. Not yet. No. No, we haven't I haven't even started, you know, drafting a letter to the governor and to Secretary of Finance. I would hope, seriously, I would hope that um, everything is above board and uh, they could uh, justify those things because at the end of the day it's not gonna be me that's uh, that's going to hold them accountable. I think, you know, we have uh, myriads of uh, federal policies, myriads of statutes that would govern those uh, those programs and, and expenditure. Uh, so uh, if, if the public auditor, the inspector general said those are not, <coughs> one, disallowed costs are almost illegal in abuse of, of uh, expenditure, then they're gonna have to be held accountable to, to that, and I would hope, again, I would hope that none of that uh, has occurred, but they, uh, they don't know till we open the books, right? So I have another question. Uh, uh, so um, you, uh, your coalition now has control of the House and Senate. Uh, there is a pending legislation in relation to ARPA in which would give the power of the purse back to the House and Senate, in this case, Uncle Sam's purse. Would mm -hmm. you support that as governor to give Absolutely. legislators yes, the chance yes, to appropriate federal funds? Yes, I would. I'm not afraid of doing that. I really am not. You know, I believe that the legislature, I haven't been in the legislature for 12 years. You know, we, we, have, a, we have a role. The legislature has a, certainly a definite role. And we'll just say, okay, so we have $100 million left. What are the priorities? This? And, and it's going to have to be a, a, a very robust discussion. But I have absolutely no problem doing that. So you would sign that into law within sure. the first 100 days? Yeah. But they, they have to have super majority. <laughs> <laughs> Dave and I are in a position to, we, we've been in this this uh, situation when we were in the legislature and and yes, uh, there are times when 
he said we wish we had um, contributed to the decision making process, uh, particularly for uh, a significant significant amount of, of resources for the whole Commonwealth. Um, you know, I'll give you an example, and this is just my personal take. You know, when you give farmers ten, fifteen thousand dollars individually, and you have, you know, fifty of them, you know, that's a significant amount of funds. Now, what is it that the farmers need? What is it really that uh, <coughs> they really need? You know, fifty tractors individually buying tractors, or should the government re reset a, a sort of an equipment service uh, uh, system where we have 10 really good, you know, tractors that would service all the farms and, and you know, do it that way? Uh, there's a lot of ways to, to uh, skin the cat, and sometimes, you know, you got to look at them and not just be very just conveniently uh, spend money is just for the hell of spending it. And it's the same thing with fisheries, the same thing with any small businesses. And, uh, but to get back to your original uh, question, I, I would invite them. Let's sit down. Let's have a fiscal summit, right? And, but you know, that, that was I'm not going to question <coughs> the governor's uh, reasoning for doing that and excluding the legislature from the process uh, of ARPA right now. I'm not, that's over and done with. And, but uh, you ask a very pointed question to me today that I, would I be amenable to uh, having the legislature uh, be part of the process? Absolutely. And uh, there are still some government vendors out there uh, we've heard from who haven't received uh, payments for goods and services they've performed. Uh, this is a change administration. What's your message to them, and how how can they get a hold of you in terms of, um, you know, getting those uh, paid out to them? That well, they, I'm going to have to ask the lieutenant governor elect to uh, answer that because he's been he's been down that road many times, and and probably some of the vendors. Uh, uh, were uh, committed through his office. So. Well, uh, thank you for that question, uh, Tomas. I know there's a lot of vendors that are, are still owed a lot of money. Some vendors. Uh, but when we converted from uh, JD Edwards to uh, unit system, it's a lot of confusion in the system. So now all these vendors have to secure their invoice, submit it to finance for review and process of. Uh, your request for payment, and they have to go through so many steps, you know, and that's that's a a long way for those people out there that have provided the services. Which is, I do not believe in business providing service if you don't have a purchase order or contract. Uh, you gotta have those uh, documents so when they finish, they can sign off on it and submit request for payment so we can pay them properly on time. They have people to pay. That's why we have a lot of businesses that are having problems they can't pay their employees so mm -hmm. we're gonna be honest to them also so uh, when we request for from a contractor or any vendor here we're gonna make sure that we're ready to pay for their services all right just my last question uh, to uh, Tina and Layla uh, you're here again uh, alongside the uh, uh, now uh, governor and lieutenant governor elect uh, are you seeking positions uh, in this administration? Uh, have you been asked to be on the transition team? Uh, what does your involvement look like in the months, uh, weeks, or, or days even moving forward, given uh, your presence here right alongside the uh, winners of the election? Well, at, at this point, um, Arnold and Dave have asked us, and, and other Democrats as well, to assist in the transition, and we have agreed to help. In, in what way does, uh, will you be helping? I think those details still need to be ironed out. 
um, and we will be having those conversations, I would expect. Uh, this week. Would you like to work in a Palacios Abitang administration when they're sworn in? I am looking for ways to serve, and if there is an opportunity to serve that I'm qualified for, I will apply. <laughs> As everybody else should. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I will also be applying um, if there is a spot that uh, I think would be good for, for me to continue to serve. But I'm also looking at how I can serve in a lot of other ways too, uh, continuing with volunteer work um, in my, my precinct. So uh, my precinct representative, I'll be tapping into you. <laughs> um, but I, I guess I just want to say that a lot of our supporters have also expressed interest in seeing us uh, continue to work with the team um, and that's kind of what's motivated me to continue to consider it um, because I know that a lot of our supporters you know the the Democrats that did decide to vote in, in this uh, runoff election uh, really know that they in order for the pledge to come through they, they feel like they want to see our involvement in there and for their because of their support because of their dedication throughout this long election process um, for them, I, I, will, I will do whatever I can to serve. And that's always been why I even chose to run, is because I want to serve. Thank you. Um, I have a question. So, um, referring to your new pledge, you guys mentioned that the, one of the priorities of the AP administration is restoring um, the integrity in law enforcement. How do you see yourself addressing that the first time you do And that's the vetting process. <coughs> I'm, we're we're going to look for highly qualified, highly ethical individuals to run that department. And individuals that knows the inner workings of, of a public safety department or enforcement department. Um, that's going to be uh, front and center. Uh, the ethical part is very critical for an organization like the Department of Public Safety because it's not just the, the people in the organization, it's this is the public out there. Um, that's the first, one of the first department uh, that people look for is, is for their safety and everything that happens and they need help, these are the individuals and, and, and enforcement of laws are, are very critical. Yeah, um, you know one of the one of the things that many government in our region have done after going through many challenges uh, of ethical or you know leadership uh, is that everyone who have the opportunity to have uh, trainings in ethics and some of us had that when we started working 30 years ago and, uh, and some of us need to go back and get that refresher course on it uh, and so that's what we need to do across the, the, the Commonwealth government and we will do that and uh, I, I believe Guam did that for I heard that Guam did that and, and um, we will, um, or at least immediately, the individuals that are going to be taking on new positions uh, will have to go through that training, and we're going to, that's one of the transition uh, projects that we're going, to, we're going to look for is who, where do we get uh, companies or, or consultants, <coughs> consultancies that could make those training happen, and a short period of time so that any incoming, incoming new um, head of departments or agencies will have to take those, those training. If I might add, uh, investing in the professional development of uh, political appointees and government employees is also part of the Unity Pledge. That's right. <coughs> Brad, no more questions? Who else? Arnold? Thomas? Yeah, actually, um, if uh, Lieutenant Governor, uh, what is the dynamic uh, that you will work with uh, with each other? Um, for the past few years, we haven't really seen that collaboration between the two heads of state. So what, what type of relationship 
who we have, and well, the lieutenant governor uh, like being charged. Let me answer number two. that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we did have a good working relationship, despite what has been said and as what the narratives that have been sold to the public. It was only after I decided to run. And it was only after, I guess, it was a pointed letter that I wrote while I was off island. And that had to do with, I believe it was the retirees, 25% versus the legislature. You know, it was, it was, a, it was the legislature's fault. And so I, I wrote a, a letter and that was kind of pointed and he didn't like it, and, and so that was when I saw the relationship just went down here. Mm -hmm. we, 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 but um, to the extent that our relationship is, I you know I know Dave for forever. I mean, I grew up with him in the same village, in the same district, and uh, always had this inherent respect for him as a elder brother, and. Um, our communications are not are not going to cease. I mean, he used, used to serve in the biggest precinct, in Precinct One, and of course, every member of the legislature would, especially in the House, would really focus on his precinct. And Dave was very adamant, adamantly, and very, very um, strong advocate of the, of his precinct, and so. Uh, there were times when I said, wait a minute, you know, but we, we have our own disagreements and, and we would talk it over and, and at the end we would, we would end up passing a legislation that would serve both of our precincts. So I know that, that I can work with him even when we disagree, but I hope that those uh, situations where we disagree are going to be far far few in between. I gave him a lot of hitting. I have a lot of gray hair. Just my final question. Uh, can you just uh, address Rhoda and Tinian residents, how uh, they will be served in this administration? There are some uh, 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 you know, representatives uh, elect, I think, from, from Rhoda or, and uh, even Tinian. Can you just address those constituents and how they're going to be woven into uh, you your know, service? Um, it's it's painful for me in the last year uh, or two years when I was going down to Rhoda. We go down to Rhoda, and especially Rhoda, because it's there's there's so many challenges, transportation challenges, and opportunity challenges over there, and and so we are going to look closely at how we're going to we're going to. Uh, reset and jumpstart the economy in Rhoda and even the opportunities for people in Rhoda. Uh, you know, I, a simple example is like when when you drive down Songsung Village, a lot of those those buildings have been closed down by owners or have been repoed by CDA. Uh, that's, that is very, very unfortunate. I grew up going down to Rhoda, to a really robust village, very, um, and it's it's totally different now. It's like some people even from Rhoda are saying, "Well, you know, it's you going down the south, it's almost like ghost town." Uh, but there are opportunities. I mean, had we taken thirty million dollars and set that aside, forty million dollars out of the ARPA fund, and said, "Okay, where's the Rhoda leadership? What are we going to do?" And let's set up a a mini economic summit for <coughs> the island of Rhoda and the island of Tinian, and say, where are the priorities for for this, and and, and let's see uh, where um, where we're going to prioritize those those projects that's going to have meaningful impact on, on on the people of Rhoda. I mean, people probably thought I was crazy when I was campaigning. I said, you know, we have 430. Thank you. Four hundred and four hundred eighty million dollars in ARPA, and we have other CARES money and all that, all that uh, funds available. Um, and I, I, I look back to the covenant, and, and 
Governor Fitio is, is very familiar with this. You know, Rota leadership back then was like, we demand our 12%. Rota and Clem would demand their 12% no matter what, and, and, and that goes. So where's the 12% for Rota and Tinian and ARPA? That should be a starting point. And people thought I was crazy. And, and, that, and that is why it's unfortunate that it was not a legislative process, right? And if was, had there been a legislative process, I think things would probably be different and, and those opportunities for, for funding resources and to jumpstart the economy and to help the island of Rhoda and to make sure that the island of Tien continue to thrive would not have been a problem. Only in the last six months, I think that's when they started uh, letting some funds flow through. And it's, it's, it wasn't really, to me, it wasn't as meaningful as it should be because the funds that are being provided are just for immediate short-term employment of people. And, and you know, a six months employment for 30 FTEs is not, just not gonna cut it in the long term and, and sustain uh, on development for Aurora. Uh, there are opportunities, I'm telling you, for Rhoda and Tinian. Tinian is on his way because of the military uh, uh, activities there, but Rhoda we need to pay attention to. Uh, tourism over there, you know, uh, is, is a, a, a gold mine for tourism. Had we, had we made a plan for it immediately, um, there are so many opportunities for, for development on that small island. You know, uh, would it have been more? Would it not be more meaningful to say, okay, so why is a sack of rice forty-two dollars, or sometimes over fifty dollars on Rota? Where is the cost? And it basically boils down to the transportation system and the warfits and all the other added on costs. So would it have been better to for the government to say, okay, we're gonna subsidize this for a year for all goods coming into Rota uh, rather than putting three hundred dollars into people's uh, checking account and that's gonna